Hi, my name is Dave Bode for PremiumBead.com and in this lighting series we will be covering a variety of lighting instruments, lighting support, modifiers, tools and accessories, and we will be going over a few different interview lighting setups. In this video we will be talking about LED lighting instruments. LED lighting instruments are relatively new to the world of video production. LEDs can produce nearly all colors of light, but white is what we'll be dealing with here. A single LED is a hard light, but the majority of LED lighting instruments are made up of an array of LEDs, sometimes using over 1,000 or more. This results in an array of micro-shadowing as each LED casts a shadow. Sometimes this is a problem and sometimes it isn't depending on how you are using the light. LEDs are also quite efficient and because they run on fairly low voltage direct current, they can use batteries. They can also last for several thousand hours, sometimes up to 10,000, but you will see a color shift over the life of the LED. The durability and power efficiency makes them extremely valuable for run and gun shooting where you don't have a lot of time to set up power and are constantly on the move. They are also very lightweight so they make very effective on camera lights. Although there are many benefits of LED lighting they do suffer from color issues in all but the highest end instruments. This will change over the next 10 years as the cost of production of high quality LED lamps drops. Right now most of the lower cost LED units we'll need some minus green filtration just to get them in the neighborhood of looking reasonable. Because of this, they are not my go-to light of choice for lighting up people, but I do use them for a lot of other things. This is a very cheap battery operated on-camera style LED light. This particular light has 160 LEDs and has a reasonable output that is variable with a dimmer. A good number of these units will be battery powered only, but some will have the option to plug in a DC power source. This light is pretty directional and most of the LED lights out there have a fairly narrow beam angle. I often will use this light with a minus green filter to correct for the green color cast and or a diffuser filter to get a wider spread of the light. This light works really well for an on-camera light, especially when it's not cranked up to maximum output. Depending on the batteries and the actual LED you are using, you can get anywhere from one and a half to three to four hours with a little loss of power towards the end. They will usually go a little bit longer after that, but they slowly dim down. I use this light frequently as a hair light for interviews and they are really useful for adding a highlight to an object in a scene. Its small size means you can hide it behind things very easily. In general, these types of high number LED array lights do not get hot. They'll get warm, but not hot. Higher power units may generate more heat, but they usually will have a way to dissipate the excess. Another one of the instruments I use is this 900 LED unit. It runs off a power supply, but can be battery operated as well. I bought this light specifically for a project that I did in Asia because I needed something very rugged and that had enough punch for doing interviews in brightly lit spaces. This light and the smaller LED light worked well and provided enough output to get me through the interviews. This larger light is basically a much larger version of this light. It has more LEDs, so it has more output. And just like this light, this LED 900 light has a lot of micro shadowing, which can look really terrible if it isn't diffused. Again, I use this light with a minus green filter to correct the color cast, and that works pretty well. I also wanted to point out here, after I add the minus green filter, I throw on a diffuser panel to the front here. This cuts the light output, but also makes the beam much wider. And right here, I'm showing you that the micro shadowing is pretty much gone. You only really get a big drastic micro shadowing effect when objects are really close to an LED source with multiple LEDs. The further you get away from the LED, the less noticeable the micro shadowing effect is. The barn doors that you see here are not super useful at cutting the light. 
I would normally take them off, but they do a good job of protecting the LEDs when it's traveling. This light has dropped almost $200 since I bought it a few years ago, which goes to show you how fast this tech will get good and cheap. This light is pretty directional, so it can work pretty well for a hair light, backlight, or as a background light. It also has just enough punch to be used outside, close up, to get a better exposure on a person's face. This is an example of a higher end LED lighting unit from Lowell called Prime 200. These have a CRI of 91 plus and are available in a 200, 400, and 800 sized model. These models do not correspond to the number of LEDs in the light as this light appears to have about 294 LEDs in it. All of these models are available in tungsten or daylight color and have a beam angle of 50 degrees. Although it was built for the studio, it is definitely rugged enough for travel. The Prime LEDs are DMX, dimmable, and have fanless cooling. You can get a barn door softening set for a bit of softening and edge control as well. And they have a honeycomb grid for increased control over spill. Lowell provides beam and performance data on their site, so you will know if the output of this light will suit your needs. Although these are not color mixing systems, you can alter the color temperature around 1 to 200 degrees by changing the DMX settings. This may help critical color balance to other light sources. You can also use a standard gel filter for a more drastic change. These LEDs are very useful tools. If you have a unit with excellent color like this Lowell Prime, you can use it as you would any other quality lighting instrument. The other lights are still useful, but sacrifices have to be made if you want to use them as a key or fill, as the color isn't quite there. They are useful for a number of other applications where you need to splash color on a background or highlight an object. They will also work well as a hair light or a kicker with some corrective filtration.